Good morning and welcome to our English service. Thank you for joining us today. Please watch the screens for ways that you can give. Please enjoy the worship with us and let's sing together. Tries to roll over my bones, and sorrow comes to steal the joy I own. The brokenness and pain is all I know. I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken.
darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every other. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every hour. I worship you. That is who you are. That is. 
Good morning. Sunday, the 14th of June, 2020. We close to the end of the lockdowns. We in the time of Pentecost, or like the Hebrew Bible is saying Shavuot, when God wrote His law in our hearts 50 days after Passover. And not on stones anymore like so many years before on Mount Sinai. These times we live in is the harvest, se harvest season. God is calling His children to be His disciples. And the topic of today's message to be baptized. To pledge ourselves to Him to live in close relationship with Him. Through the Spirit is Ruach that is with us. My story, I grew up in a, in a Christian home. But I also had to meet the risen Christ. And although I knew Him a long time now, the older I get, the more He inspires me, He guides me, and He shines His grace upon me me and on my life. I was baptized in inverted commas as a young baby in 1970, but today I know what happened that time was a promise by my parents that they will taught me about and they will teach me about God. And it was like an inclusion in God's covenant. It was a blessing that was spoken over my life. But I had to come to the point where I was baptized here at the age of 42 in Middleburg on 12 September 2012. And you can see my certificate there on the screen. That was when I realized what dying with Christ is and resurrection into a new life with him. In 2017, I was again baptized. Reason being, because I was in Israel. And I had to experience what Jesus experienced there in the Jordan River. And let's look at a video of that experience. Would your mom say that Jesus Christ is my year? Amen. Jesus Christus is my Heer. And I glow my heart. And I glow my heart. That God to my do it up gewekkend. That God to my do it up gewekkend. And now live I. And now live I. And I live I live. And I live I live. For ever and ever. For ever and ever. Okay, now give me your hand. Now we need to get here. Come on. Johannes, Petrus, Jordan. This is a fora of my name. I drop you together with the Holy Ghost from out. And Jori, it's op gezag van jou Jere Jesus, wat ek doop in die naam van die Vader, Seen en Heilige Gees. Wow, I get goosebumps when I, when I look at that. I'm today going to share with you some scriptures on baptism out of the Tree of Life version, which is a diverse, which was a... a, a, a a translation that was done by a diverse community of Messianic Jewish and Christian scholars, which collaborated to produce the Tree of Life Messianic Family Bible. Leaders, scholars, artists, professors, psalmists, linguists, writers, parents, and children came together to work on this awesome version of the Bible. And they, their name comes from Proverbs 3 verse 18, which says, Wisdom is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are those who hold her fast. Let's get on to baptism. Baptism comes from the word, the Greek word, baptizu, 
which is a derivative to say to make whelm. That is to make fully wet. If I look at the English dictionary, it says engulf, submerge, or bury. Have you ever seen a submarine floating only on top of the water? You have to go down. Let me give you a run through of baptism in God's word. You see, water is very special for God. Already in Genesis 1, he said that this, his spirit was hovering over the waters. And then, late in Genesis 1, he separated the waters from the top and the waters at the bottom. And then, Genesis 1 verse 9, God said, let water below the sky be gathered into one place. You see, he created land out of water. Life came out of water. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 2, 10 verse 2, when he talks about what happened at the Red Sea crossing with Moses, he said they, the Israelites, were all baptized or immersed into Moses, into the cloud and in the sea. Then, I'm going to share, share two scripture parts with you on, on leprosy. Why leprosy? Leprosy was a disease in the Old Testament and even in Jesus' times where people got whitish kind of sores in, on their body and they, they were like cast out. A reflection of what happens when sin comes over your life. And in Leviticus 14 verse 1, we read about this awesome experience where people can come to the priest, he can have a look at you, and then he can pronounce you clean. And then what they did is they took two birds, they brought two birds, they brought cedar wood, they brought scarlet, and they brought hyssop to the priest. And the two birds, one of the birds were killed, and one of the birds were let free after the one bird has touched the blood of the bird that was killed. Reflecting me and your life. You see, when Jesus comes and he cleanses us, he let us go free. And all of that was done over living water. We read a similar story in 2 Kings 5 when, when there was a, a, a general in the Assyrian army called Naim, Naaman. Naaman, and he came to Elijah, and Elijah said to him the following words. He said, go and wash in the Jordan seven times. Go and wash in the Jordan seven times. And your flesh will be restored and you will be cleaned. And Naaman was complaining and said, no, but I can then just, uh, and, and, and Elijah didn't even come out. And he said, but I can wash in the rivers of my country. But you see, the key thing here is, if God washes you clean, you will be clean. In John 1 verse 33, John the Baptist spoke about Jesus when he was baptizing. He said, I did not know him, but the one who sent me to immerse in water. And he said to me, the one on whom you see the Ruach coming down and remaining, this is the one who immerses in the Ruach HaKodesh, in the Holy Spirit. Later in John, in the book of John, Jesus talks about uh, baptism himself. He said, Yeshua answered, Amen, Amen, I tell you, unless one is born of water, out of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Mark 16 verse 15, at the end of Jesus' ministry on earth, he said to them, he told them, go into all the world and proclaim the good news to every creature. He who believes and is immersed, shall be saved. But he who does not believe, shall be condemned. 
Matthew 28, 19, Go therefore and make, make disciples of all nations, immersing, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Acts 8 verse 33, there was a guy from Ethiopia and Philip met him and Philip, Philip said the following, uh, oh yes, and then they came to water and, and, and he was reading out of the book of Isaiah and then they came to water and Philip said to him, and he said to Philip, now as they were going down the road, they came to some water. The Enoch said, look, water, what's to prevent me from being immersed or baptized? And then he was baptized. In Acts 2 verse 38, Peter said to a lot of people, repent and let each of you be immersed. Baptized in the name of Messiah, Yeshua. Because Messiah was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. So we, we too might walk in a newness of life. Romans 6 verse 3. Or do you not know that all of us, listen to Paul's words. Or do you not know that all of us who were immersed into Messiah, Yeshua, were immersed into His death. You see, when you go down into the water, you are immersed in His death. Therefore, we were buried together with Him through immersion into death, in order that just as Messiah was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in a newness of life. Wow. A quick rundown on some scriptures on baptism, but I want to focus on one area of scripture where the Apostle Paul, uh, the Apostle Peter, wrote the following words in 1 Peter 3, verse 18. He said, For Messiah once suffered for sins also, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Ruach, or the Spirit of God. Through the Ruach, he also went and preached to the spirits in prison long ago, and then he compares baptism to what happened with Noah in the ark. He said, long, ad long ago they, referring to the people that was disobedient, they disobeyed while God kept waiting patiently. In the days of Noah, as the ark was being built, in that ark a few, that is eight souls, were brought safely through water. And then he says in 1 Peter 3 verse 21 and 22, corresponding to that, Linking to that that I've just talk, taught you about Noah. Immersion now, or baptism now, what does it do? It brings you to safety. Not the removal of dirt from the flesh, because only Jesus can save you from sins. But this is like a pledge, is the Apostle Peter is saying but a pledge to God of a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Wow. Let's summarize. Why? Why baptism? Why do I need to be baptized? Number one, it is one of the sacraments that Jesus told us to do. It's an act of obedience. Like communion, you all know communion. This is one of the things that Jesus said and commanded us to do. Matthew 28. Go therefore into all the world, make disciples and baptize them. Number one. Number two. I identify and I accept and I make it my own. The death of Christ and the death for sin for me and his resurrection 
and my resurrection into a new life. It's something that happens. It's something that I identify with. When I go down in that water, I understand what Jesus has done for me. And as I rise up, I understand that He has been risen, that He is risen, and that I will also one day risen, and I can actually stand up as a new person and live a new life. And then thirdly, so firstly, it's an act of obedience. Secondly, I identify with the death of Christ and also the death of my sin, but also the resurrection of Christ. And then thirdly, like Peter is writing here in 1 Peter 3, it brings me into safety through a pledge of a new life with Christ. There's something new happening. When I stand up there out of the water, I live a new life. I start to live a new life. Does it mean that I'm not going to commit any sins? I don't think so. But it's like a journey. I'm committed to this journey with Christ. Have you been baptized? Have you followed the act of obedience to be baptized? I pray that God through His Holy Spirit, that once you become His child, will lead you into understanding why I do, why do I need to be baptized? Wow. Let us, let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you very much for this day. Thank you for the wonderful, the wonderful sacrament of baptism that you have created. Lord, from the beginning, you created new life out of water. You taught us so many things in your word about baptism. But Lord, we want to pledge our lives a new life through our act of obedience to be baptized. I want to pray for people around this world watching at this video that you will at this moment touch their hearts. Lord, that you will taught them your love. That you will put them on this path of obedience. And we thank you for your wonderful grace. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.